Hello and welcome back. As the video is aptly named, I will be briefly going over how I locally trained Dream Booth for style. If you aren't aware, there are some Dream Booth style models such as Arcane Diffusion and Elden Ring Diffusion created by the user NitroSock. There's also a large selection of Dream Booth models on websites such as Hugging Face and Civit AI. Anyway, I was inspired by NitroSock's workflow and tried out training my own Dream Booth style models. They are named Fantasy Art Style and Line Brush Style. This is meant to be a companion video to my previous video about the Stable Diffusion workflow using the Photoshop plugin. First of all, I'll show the text to image outputs from both of the Dream Booth models. The first one is the Fantasy Art Style model. It has a painterly effect that has semi-stylized anatomy. In the line brush style model, I was going for a hybrid East Asian ink brush style mixed with heavy line art. The aesthetic of these models was inspired by the recent Makoto Shinkai movie Suzume no Tojimari, as well as the natural landscape of the Daisetsuzan mountain range in Hokkaido. During my trip there recently, I took plenty of photographs of the area, and Lake Sugatami and Asahi Dake became the main catalyst for these pieces. I won't go too in-depth with the Dream Booth setup process using Shivram Shivrao's repository. Other videos such as this nerdy rodent video explain it quite clearly with a complete walkthrough. I also want to mention that I am using a RTX 3090 NVIDIA GPU, so if I type in NVIDIA SMI, you can see 24 gigabytes of VRAM. I set up the local Dream Booth training recently on another machine, namely this one that I'm using right now. So the username is Ika instead of my other one, which is Kasukanra, I think. And I found that it wouldn't run using the BF16 floating point. The error I got was, um, I think some, uh, I'll show a screenshot of it. I can't remember what it was exactly off the top of my head. Uh, the way that I circumvented this problem was by adding this argument to the bash file called mix precision equals fp16, like so. And this is a nice segue to the modified shell script file. For reference, the base model is the stable diffusion 1.5 model created by runway ml. So on line three, I have that. And this is key as I wanted to leverage the power of the subsequent 1.5 inpainting model through model merging. In addition, I want to draw attention to two things in this file. First is the instance prompt, which is DB fantasy art and style, and the class prompt, which is just the word style. Uh, as for the instance prompt, this will end up being the trigger word when using the checkpoint file. I usually set this as the very first word in my prompt. If you follow NitroSock's example on his various Reddit posts, he uses his model's name plus the word style for his instance token. For his class prompt, I believe he said that he used the word style as well, so I followed his example. The second thing that's different is the introduction of new variables I declared in the shell script, which is from here, line 14 to 18. Initially, I was unsure of the ideal step count in addition to many other things for training locally. Fortunately enough, I was able to find this Reddit post in which the user Roger Rue graciously shared his variable initialization choice. This eventually became the reference training convention I used. However, I did not end up using the text uh, underscore encoder argument in the final training for style as I received quite poor results. So if we take a closer look at the variable declaration, you can see that all you really need to input is the num instance images variable. This is the amount of images in your training data set. For me, while I'm training the newer version, I'm not sure what I'll call it, maybe version 1.1, or version two of fantasy art style, I uh, have 280 images. And if you follow uh, the convention that Roger Rue has set out, 
than all the other subsequent numbers such as steps and uh, regular class images will be generated all based off of your number of data set images. On a side note, there's a method to approximate the dream booth style model if the final trained model isn't to your liking. If you go to around line 233 in the train dream booth file, there's an argument called save interval. The default is set to 10,000 steps. For me, I changed my default to 5,000 steps. And I'll show it here in my WSL Ubuntu. Here, open up the terminal, ls, and you can see I have 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, etc. And if you aren't happy with the final converted checkpoint model, then you can pick one of the previous save weights to convert. So if I didn't like 2,000 or 24,807, I could go to 20,000 and try it out. Uh, just one note of caution, it takes up a lot of hard drive memory, so please be cognizant of how much space you have available. As for the fantasy art style dataset itself, these images may or may not be part of the training dataset. You can see that these set of images are the ones that I painted for my textual inversion video. And then I have some other ones in here which are generated and bootstrapped from the actual um, uh, fantasy art style model. Uh, they're somewhere in here. I'm not exactly sure where. Oh, there they are up here. So these these are the outputs from the uh, these are the inference outputs from the actual model itself from text to image. Other images in here may or may not be in the data set. I'm just saying hypothetically they could be. And that's basically more or less how it looks like. This is something I sculpted before. You've probably all seen it before. Here we are in the good old automatic 1111 web UI. I've already loaded in my train dream booth model checkpoint. One thing of note is that if you train it locally doing what I did, which is through the Shivram Shivrao's um, repository, what you get is in the output model is a diffuser and you want to convert it to a checkpoint. And there's a special script for that. I will link a video to Nerdy Rodent's video about this where he explains it much more clearly. And so for all intents and purposes, assume that I've already converted the model. And now for the fun part, I will start doing some text to image generations and see how the new model stacks up after bootstrapping it with more inference outputs from the previous model. Okay. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad. Perhaps I should use high res fix on the next few generations. Okay, I'll go with some high res fix right now. So I ended up doing some uh, batch generations of high res fix, and these are the results that I got. So, yeah, this is one of the better ones I had. Yeah, it's okay. Fine. Yeah, pretty good. Interesting. What I did was I just did a very quick batch size of eight generation, and this is what I got. It seems fine to me. This one looks really nice. I like this one as well. Yeah. And so that's basically it for the model. Maybe I can go one more and see what I get. And this is the second generation of the batch. Eh. I think I saw one. This is really nice. And I like this one as well. So yeah, I think the model is doing quite well. You always have to use your eyes and your own personal taste to get something you like.